In this video, we will learn another common problem solving strategy. But before we discuss the strategy explicitly, I want you to solve this problem on your own. So here is the problem. The problem is to write a program that prints uh, patterns like this. For example, if the input is 4, then you need to uh, print a pattern where you know you have 4 lines and uh, we have uh, 2 triangles. So you can see that the uh, width of this triangle uh, is initially uh, 4 and then it uh, decreases after each uh, line. And uh, similarly, we have a similar triangle on the right hand side as well. And uh, this pattern should work for any integer n greater than 1. Here are a couple of other examples. This is for n equal to 5 and then n equal to 6. So you can see that these uh, triangles are getting bigger and bigger as the size n increases. So I'll pause the video, take a moment and uh, think how you'll solve the problem and hopefully uh, write the solution as well. Okay, so here's one common uh, pro uh, problem solving strategy. The strategy is to first solve a concrete version of the problem, then look for patterns, then finally generalize the solution. So that means initially you can uh, like hard code some values and solve it for a specific n. So let's take the number n equal to 4 for example and just let's just try to solve for it. Let's not worry about the fact that our program should eventually work for any n. So that's the first strategy and once we solve for n equal to 4 then we look for patterns and finally we will generalize the solution. So initially it is perfectly fine to hard code certain values. So this is the strategy. Solve a concrete problem also called as solve a uh, specific problem and then finally generalize the solution. Okay, so now that we want to uh, solve the problem for uh, n equal to 4, how will we uh, solve it? Well, uh, one thing we, we can uh, notice is this uh, kind of looks like a 2D array, right? Uh, there are like bunch of rows and then within each row there are a bunch of columns. And uh, we can also see that the length of uh, each row is 8, the size is 4 and uh, we have uh, 8 columns here and then 8 columns here and um, in these two lines as well. So we have a 4 by 8 matrix, 4 rows and 8 columns. So that's uh, one insight and uh, let's represent it in a 2D array. These are the columns, these are the uh, rows. So you can see that initially we have bunch of ones and then in the next row we have two gaps here. So these are the two gaps. And uh, in the third row we have four gaps in the middle. One, two, three, four. And finally we have uh, six gaps in the last row. So let's uh, see that here. Two, four and then finally uh, six. So I uh, will represent uh, the gaps by zeros and uh, the stars by one uh, just for uh, our uh, clarity. And uh, here you can see that um, in the second row the indexes 3 and 4 are blank and uh, in the next row indexes from 2 to 5 are blank and finally the indexes from 1 to 6 are blank and the remaining ones have uh, stars in them. So now it uh, when you look at it you can notice that there's a pattern right. So the starting value of, of the gap is decreasing by 1 in each iteration and the ending value is increasing by 1. So this is the pattern that we have found. So now let's go ahead and uh, solve this problem for uh, n equal to 4. And the other insight we had, to, uh, the other insight we had was that uh, we have uh, this 2D uh, matrix like structure and uh, that's why we need a double uh, for loop. Okay, so how do we uh, create uh, the pattern? Let's uh, store the pattern in a string. Remember we uh, discussed data representation in the 
one of the previous problems so you can either use a 2d array or uh, you can use a string both ways uh, you can uh, solve the problem uh, in this case let's take a string and uh, what we'll do is we'll iterate through uh, all the values in this uh, array or rather uh, all the rows and columns in the array and uh, one more thing you can notice is there are no gaps here right in the first row there are no gaps the gaps start only from the second row so is that a special case well let's worry about it later let's just try to solve this part of the problem by that i mean these things um, we'll use a variable called i to represent the rows and j for the columns as usual um, we'll start with the first row and uh, we have until uh, the last row and now we have to iterate through all the columns so we can say for uh, j equal to 0 j less than 8 we saw that uh, the length of uh, each row is 8 so we'll use 8 here and uh, let's just print star for now right so we can just say s plus equal to star and uh, once we exit the inner for loop that means we have completed this line so let's add a new line and finally we will uh, print this s and uh, now let's just run this code so you can see that we have like three lines we have a bunch of stars the gaps are missing so now we are kind of writing experimental code we have not completely gotten the logic but we are trying to figure it out so this is perfectly fine this is one of the strategies right writing uh, experimental code and the other strategy we are also applying is writing a few like three four lines of code and immediately running it to make sure that there are no bugs so far okay now finally we need to add these gaps and uh, we saw that the gaps range from 3 to 4 then 2 to 5 so one and finally 1 to 6 so what we can do is we can use a couple of variables to uh, store the starting and ending positions so initially we can have start equal to 3 and uh, end equal to 4 right that's the value for the first iteration let's just use that and uh, continue to solve this problem now what we have to do is if uh, j greater than or equal to start and less than or equal to end this means we are in a column somewhere in between where a gap needs to be added so if uh, j is such a value then we will just add a blank else we will add a star once again let's run our code okay so now we have some gaps but uh, they are not uh, varying depending on the row so what we have to do is we have to change start and end after each uh, row so what we'll do is we'll have to decrement start by one and increment end by one so we'll just say start minus equals one and plus equals one let's run the code again awesome now it's looking closer to what we wanted in the first place now the only thing missing is the first row so how do we solve that one way to solve that is uh, we can just uh, add eight stars in the beginning so we can just say for let j equal to zero j less than eight j plus plus uh, s plus equal to uh, star so you can treat it as a special case uh, before uh, coming into uh, this loop so that is one perfectly valid way there's also another way uh, which is a more elegant way what we can uh, think of uh, these gaps as instead of thinking of it as from 3 to 4 what we can do is um, we can uh, say hey in the first row the gaps start at 4 and uh, ends at 4 so it kind of there is no gap right so that is one way to think about it so let's try to uh, solve it uh, that way so to incorporate this uh, case what we'll do is we'll set start to 4 and uh, end to 4 and uh, another minor uh, change we have to make is instead of saying less than uh, equal to end we have we have to change it to less than end because we have uh, no gaps here so that's uh, one change we can do now our starting and ending value will uh, go from uh, 3 to 5 and uh, 2 to 6 and uh, 1 to 7 but not including these two things right 
so this is a minor change that you have made to uh, handle this uh, special case but still uh, with respect to the code it doesn't look as though there's a special case let's run this code again okay so now we can see that the last value is uh, missing uh, for that we just need to uh, set uh, i until uh, 5 so we are varying i from uh, or oh sorry we are varying i from 0 to 4 so instead of 1 to 4 we have to change it to 0 to 4 let's try that awesome so now it looks uh, fine so because we had a strong foundation we knew that start and end should be uh, uh, decremented and incremented respectively the remaining things we could uh, figure out cool so this is the specific version of the problem so now we have to generalize it so that it works for any n now it's like fairly straightforward isn't it we have to uh, set start and end to uh, n itself and then we have to set j as uh, twice the size so let's uh, do that we have our code here and let's have a variable n uh, we can initialize it to 4 and we can set start equal to n end equal to n i varies until n and uh, end varies until 2 times n okay now let's run the code we get the same output great so now the code is more general and we have uh, solved the problem so it is quite easy for us to go from uh, the concrete case to the general case because we use the concrete case to look for the patterns let's uh, vary n now let's set n equal to 8 cool 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so the code works um so one thing you have to notice here is the only value we have hard coded here is 8 everything else depends on n start depends on n n depends on n the way in which i varies also depends on n so it is very important to not have hard coded values at the end if you see any hard coded value it is a bad sign right so finally to check whether you have already uh, you have correctly solved the problem or not check whether uh, you have uh, hard coded values or not as programmers what we do is we write software that works for all the cases right and that's why developing this skill of generalizing the solution is very easy for example if you have like 200 different customers you won't write 200 different pieces of code for each customer right the, lo the logic should be same for all the customers and we have to elegantly handle all the different cases and uh, by solving such problems you will develop that skill